Canadian Chinese Cuisine, Wikipedia article audio. Canadian Chinese cuisine is a popular style of cooking exclusive to takeout and dine-in eateries found across Canada. It was the first form of commercially available Chinese food in Canada. This cooking style was invented by early Cantonese immigrants who adapted traditional Chinese recipes to Western tastes and the available ingredients. This cuisine developed alongside a similar version in the United States. Chinese workers were employed in the 1800s by Chinese labor contractors during the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway linking Montreal, Quebec with Vancouver, British Columbia. Many of those workers who stayed once the railway was completed resorted to opening small inexpensive restaurants or working as cooks in mining and logging camps, canneries and in the houses of the upper classes in cities and towns. They prepared variations on traditional Cantonese food that were well received by local patrons and they were prized as cooks in wealthier households. This occurred despite the fact that few if any of them were trained chefs. Origins 1960s Present In most small towns in western Canada, the Chinese cafe was the first restaurant established and often the only one. People did not buy the food of their own ethnic group since they could prepare those themselves, whereas Chinese food was a novelty. Furthermore, the Chinese community was not heavily involved in agriculture, so this presented an opportunity for an alternative source of income. Consequently, the Chinese community specialized in the restaurant business, and were able to undercut and outcompete later rivals. These Chinese restaurants became an icon of prairie towns and served as a foothold for a new Canadian community, and this history is displayed in a new exhibit called Chop Suey on the Prairies at the Royal Alberta Museum. In British Columbia, a form of buffet known as the Chinese smorgasbord developed in pre-railway gas town when Scandinavian loggers and mill workers encouraged their Chinese cooks to turn a sideboard into a steam table instead of bringing plates of single dishes to the dining table. Following the introduction of the automobile and the invention of the inn restaurant, Chinese takeout service was augmented by Chinese inns, including the now vanished Dragon Inn chain which was also known for its smorgasbord. Bill Wong, father of journalist Jan Wong, was a serial restaurateur in Montreal who reportedly opened the city's first Chinese buffet restaurant, House of Wong on Queen Mary Road in the heavily Jewish Snowden district in the 1950s. He later opened the now-closed iconic restaurant Bill Wong's on nearby Deckery Boulevard in 1962. Further Cantonese immigration to Canada began anew in the 1960s, and was ignited in the 1980s in anticipation of China's administrative takeover of Hong Kong. This resulted in many Hong Kong families relocating to Australia, the United States, the United Kingdom, and above all Canada. This preference for Canada was due to its immigration policy, a high standard of living, established Chinese community, and its membership in the Commonwealth. Today Chinese Canadian citizens are the largest visible minority group in Canada, and Chinatowns are in every major Canadian city, with those in Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal and Calgary being the largest. This new wave of Chinese immigration has also brought a demand for more authentic Chinese food. The newer Chinese restaurants, particularly in areas of high Asian immigration, tend to serve authentic Chinese cuisine that evolved in Chinese communities outside Canada, which cater to immigrants. These range from Cantonese dim sum restaurants to Hakka cuisine restaurants with an Indian flair. Canadian Chinese Restaurants even very small towns in most of Canada have at least one Canadian Chinese restaurant, 
and many can have two or more proprietors seeking out business, often right next to each other on the main street. Many towns that cannot support a single franchise restaurant still have a thriving Chinese food restaurant. However, many independent restaurants in larger cities have found their business shrinking as delivery chains and buffets squeeze out traditional sit-down restaurants. In many towns and hamlets across the Prairie Provinces and in northern British Columbia, there can usually be found a Chinese cafe regardless of the community's size, serving Canadian and Chinese cuisine or, once more common, Chinese and Western food. In Glendon, Alberta, for example, next to a roadside model of the world's largest pierogi, sits the Pierogi Cafe, which serves Ukrainian and Chinese pierogies. This establishment is actually owned by a Vietnamese family. Canadian Chinese chop suey houses are predominantly situated in non-immigrant neighborhoods catering to non-Chinese customers. However, they are now most often mixed with those featuring the more traditional cuisines. Canadian Chinese restaurants are not limited to these areas and can often be found even at the farthest outskirts of the metropolitan areas. Because of the popularity of Canadian Chinese food, even some of the older authentic Chinese restaurants may offer Canadian Chinese dishes to cater to non-Chinese customers. Culture Restaurants in the newer Chinatowns particularly in Vancouver and Toronto, tend to cater to recent Asian immigrants and offer more varied fare, Sichuan, Hakka, Chu Chow, Taiwanese, and even Buddhist cuisine restaurants can be found there. One of the largest concentration of Chinese restaurants in North America is located in the Golden Village area in Richmond, B.C., a suburb of Vancouver, BC. The seafood served here is from the British Columbian coast. The old Toronto downtown Chinatown has seen most of the once famed restaurants on Dundas Street and Spadina Avenue close since the late 1990s, especially the Su Mei barbecue shops on Dundas Street that were located below grade. The 1990s also saw the closure of demise of HSIN Huang a three-restaurant chain in the greater Toronto area, offering dim sum, sumei, and formal Chinese dining. These restaurants, one at Chinese Center at 888 Dundas Street East Indiana, Mississauga, another at Finch Avenue and Kennedy Road in Scarborough, and their four-story flagship location at Spadina Avenue and St. Andrew Street in Old Toronto Chinatown, were decorated inside with the traditional red and yellow colors of the Feng Huang while the exterior was yellow and had a green oriental roof. In the newer suburban areas of the Greater Toronto Area, such as Highway 7 in Richmond Hill and Markham, the Chinese restaurants range from small eateries, sumei barbecue shops, and bakeries in Chinese strip malls and food courts to the all-you-can buffets that often expand beyond Chinese-Canadian to incorporate Asian fusion, to the larger and more expensive places that often function as banquet halls with 10-course meals available. Out of these upscale restaurants, the older places will often have the traditional Chinese decor, which is red and yellow colors with the Feng Huang adorning the wall behind the dais. However newer establishments tend to be decorated in a more Western contemporary style. Many of these fine dining restaurants and banquet halls often offer discounted dim sum lunches on weekdays and early weekends or to seniors, though this is a low margin segment, and their main earnings come from hosting weddings or other functions. Observers have noted that dim sum cart service is a dying breed in Toronto as more and more restaurants have switched over to a list-based dining experience. Fortunately, there are a few notable places where you can still witness these magical culinary carts being rolled out in front of you, 
and where you order by using your pointer finger, not a pen and paper. Although most restaurants are independent businesses, there are some chains such as Han's Wonton House, Kirin Chinese Restaurant, Kanji Wang, and Mandarin Restaurant. Josephine Smart, a professor from the University of Calgary, has written on the evolution of Canadian Chinese cuisine. Her papers have examined the dynamics of localization and authentication of Chinese food in Canada, and its implications for ethnic relations and the culture of consumption. Chinese restaurants generally use either one of the romanization systems for Cantonese or an ad hoc romanization rather than the pinyin romanization of Mandarin Chinese with which non-Chinese people are now most familiar. Most commonly used for takeout are foam takeout containers, while some such as Kanji Wang offers special plastic containers. Aluminum pan pie dishes were previously popular until the late 1990s when they fell out of favor due to high costs and environmental concerns. Canadian Chinese restaurants do not make use of the oyster pail like their American counterparts. For more expensive or formal occasions, Canadian Chinese food tends to be more authentic. A Chinese wedding reception typically has nine or ten courses. Expensive dishes such as shark fin, abalone, lobster, jumbo shrimp, squab, sea bass, or sea cucumber are common on a wedding banquet menu. A whole fish, chicken, or pig means luck and completeness in Chinese wedding culture. Although the Canadian version of westernized Chinese cuisine is very similar to that found in the United States, there are a few minor differences. For example, there is a very popular dish in Calgary called ginger beef that is virtually unknown outside Western Canada.